good evening. Uh, good evening. Good evening. How are you guys doing? Hello, hello, hello. All right, all right. <laughs> Welcome to Kingdom Application Ministries. Uh, tonight we're going to be looking at uh, the study of the gospel. Amen. And um, uh, one of the things that has happened is, you know, I print everything out. Well, my printer printed, but I'm out of ink. So I got blank pages. Ta-da! <laughs> anyway, but that's all right. God is good. We got another, there's more than one way of doing things. And so I'll just be looking at my laptop and we'll get it done that way. All right. All right. In the meantime, hey, <laughs> my bro, how you doing? God bless you. Glad you could make it. Uh, <clears throat> So let us get into it. Uh, let us pray first, all right? Father, I just thank you right now for prayer. Father, I thank you right now for your word. I thank you for your truth, O oh Lord. Father, I bless you and honor you this evening, Lord. We ask right now, Father, that you forgive us of our sins that we've committed knowingly and unknowingly, O oh God. Blot out our iniquities. Draw us closer to you, O oh Lord. Father, I pray for healing right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, in this vessel, in this body, O oh God, and I just thank you for it and bless you. Lord, now I pray that each and every person on this line, Father, that have an ear to hear, let them hear, O oh God. I pray right now, Father, that Father, that their ground be good ground, Father, and as we sow these seeds, O oh Father, we just thank you right now for them going into good ground. And Lord, we just bless your name and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Good evening, uh, Bishop. How you doing, sir? All right. All right. Uh, my Bishop, uh, 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 Bishop Dawson is on the line. Amen. I just want to say greetings to him. Um, okay. So tonight, we're, I got a question uh, in which I think really think I need to go into because uh, one of the things we've been building is the foundation of our lifestyle, the foundation of the kingdom. And so therefore, we're getting into how, the question tonight is, how do I study the Bible? How do I study the Bible? You know, one, that's one of the biggest questions is, you know, I know I'm supposed to study. I know I'm supposed to read it. But what what is it about this Bible? Uh, how am I supposed to study it? What what am I supposed to do in, in a place of study? Okay, let me... Uh, that's the question we're going to be looking at tonight. And I want you to uh, pay close attention uh, to what I say, uh, how, how this is done, okay? So, the first thing we want to tell you to do is you need more than one Bible, all right? If you need, if you got a King James Bible, that's great. But I recommend that you get an Amplified Bible and an NIV Study Bible along with your King James. Because first thing you need to do is have some translation, some type of translation of the word, okay? Uh, the King James is, is fine, but you know, when you get to this thou and thus is, and all the mother <laughs> and, and, and be goddess and all of them stuff. You want it in plain English. Sometimes when you just read the words, you want it in plain English. So I tell you this, you need you uh, at least two different other versions of the Bible. Now, I say NIV study Bible because it's pretty plain in English. And I say the Amplified Bible because the Amplified Bible will break stuff down so that you can see how it fits along with scripture. It will go into depth in explaining the scripture, okay? So with that being said, I must bring you to a place where, and this is going to be our lesson tonight in Mark chapter 7, is where I'm going. Mark chapter 7. One of my first Bible studies was I, I did on my own was in Mark chapter 7. And so I'm going to take you, I can't take, I can take you where I've been. So I'm going to show you what I did. In Mark chapter seven, it's about what defiles a man. What is it that defiles man? Okay. Hey, good evening, Don. How you doing? Um, uh, 
When you look at what defiles a man, Jesus tells us in Mark chapter 7, verse 14, he says, again, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen to me, everyone, and understand this. Nothing outside a person can defile them by going into them. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles him. It says, uh, verse 17, after he had left the crowd and entered the house of his disciples, asked him about this parable. Now notice Jesus spoke in parables to the people, but when he got alone with his disciples, he broke it down a little further. So in verse 17, here he is. Now he's in the audience of only his disciples, only the 12, and he breaks it down. And he asked him, he said, are you so dull? He asked, don't you see that nothing that enters a person from the outside can defile them? I'm reading from the NIV version. He said, for it doesn't go into the heart, but into their stomach and then out of the body. In saying this, Jesus declared all foods clean. What Jesus was saying here is he was dealing with how this, uh, how the, what defiles a man and how food cannot defile you. But in studying, there should be something about a story, something about something you read that just jumps off the page at you in the Bible. When that happens, that is when you get all your tools together to make sure you get some understanding of what God is trying to tell you. He speaks to us through his word. So in his word, when we read something and something just jumps off the page at you, he's trying to tell you something about you, okay? He wants you to know something about you, your surroundings, what's going on, so that he, he's communicating with you. So you, you'll know what it is because it'll jump off the page at you. It, it, it'll, it'll just like, wow, why is this so, why, is that my, why am I intrigued by this, okay? And he says, so, so in the King James Version, what I read, well, let me read verse, uh, verse 20. He said, and he went on, he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. So he's breaking it down to what defiles a person. He broke it down further from the parable so that his disciples would understand what he was talking about. So now the King James Version reads like this in verse Mark 7, verse 14. And it says, And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile him. Verse 16, And he says, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Now, when I was putting this lesson together, one of the things that jumped out at me was, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Wow, what a statement. Why is God, what is he saying here? Because it's got to be deeper than just what he just what it is on the surface. Verse 17, and when he had entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he said unto them, are you so without understanding also that do you not perceive and whatsoever thing from without entereth into a man cannot, it cannot defile him because it entereth not into his heart, but into the belly and goeth out of the draft as the draft purge, purging all meats. Now, so if you see the difference right there in verse 19 from the King James Version to the NIV version. The NIV reads verse 19 like this. For it doesn't go into the heart, but into their stomach and then out of the body. So that's really plain English. And you get a greater understanding of what this scripture, what this parable, what Jesus is talking about. How if you eat some, it cannot defile you. 
And so remember now, you got to remember who he was talking to. He was talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees who were the teachers of the law. Okay. He was talking to the people that was gathered around teaching them. So he, he spoke in parables so that they could not perceive what he was saying. But he said, he that have ears, let him hear. He said, what verse, verse 20. He said, that which cometh out of a man that defileth a man. 21, for, with, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetedness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, and foolish. foolishness. All of these things, he said, all of these things come from within and defile the man. So what? If we, so I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break this down a little further for y'all. If we continue to allow things into these gates, our eye gates, our ear gates, our sense of smell, if we're allowing things into us, they affect our heart. What do you say? Out of the heart, the mouth will speak. Okay. So a lot of things that we listen to. We learn subconsciously, like a lot of these shows on TV, we watch them over and over again, all of these housewives and stuff. And I'm telling you, it's teaching us how to respond in a non-biblical manner when you face those situations, because now you are programmed to answer the question that way. You, you go grocery shopping and you park in front of the peanut butter aisle and you stop right there. Because now you say, choosy mothers, choose Jeff. But even though Skippy is on sale and Peter Pan is in a bigger jar at a lower price, and it's what quality beer, but you stuck on Jeff because it has trained you subconsciously to that's what he's supposed to buy. You allow that in your ear gate, eye gate, and because you have. It has corrupted, it has become a part of your heart, and now it's a part of your actions. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Evil come by hearing too, and evil come by hearing of evil things. Whatever you repeat back to yourself is what the heart gets a hold of, and that's what it holds on to. So you have to uh, be a square, okay? You have to be L7. You cannot absorb all the things of this world and still walk in holiness and righteousness because subconsciously this flesh which you dwell in is getting trained in an evil manner. Okay? So here we go. One of the things I said once we once we um in in Bible study in our tools we want to get several different Bibles. But we also want to get this thing called a, um, a commentary of Matthew Henry. I got Matthew Henry commentaries. There's some other ones out there. But Matthew Henry commentary, you can find it online. Actually, it's Matthew Henry. I think it's a MatthewHenry.org out there. But if you Google Matthew Henry, it's a commentary which where you have a bunch of... Um, uh, Matthew Henry and the boys, a bunch of uh, <laughs> a bunch of men that studied the word, who now put it in a nut, broke it down and spelled it out even clearer, so that the reader can understand what you're saying. So, in Matthew Henry, it reads this. It says in verse 14, it said, and he bid them to hear and understand. Note. It is not enough for common people to hear, but they must understand what they hear. When Christ would run down the tradition of the Pharisees about washing before meat, he strikes at the opinion which was the root of it. Note, corrupt customs are best cured by rectifying corrupt notions. Now that which he does, well, now that which he goes about to set them right in is what the pollution is, which we are in danger of being damaged. All that was said about verse 14. So basically what he said is, Matthew Henry's commentary said is, Jesus was addressing the Pharisees and letting them know they were so big on people coming to church, 
And before they sit down to wash their hands, before they sat down to eat and cleanse themselves, they was more worried about that than they were about the condition of the people's heart. So much so that their hearts wasn't right, okay? So Jesus dealt with the corrupt, corrupt, uh, corrupt uh, practice versus, see, that was one of those things they start practicing, which became religious. Uh, oh, oh, let me let me break it down, bring it up to today's date. We are so concerned with the tithes and offerings that we're not concerned with the soul and the salvation of the people that come in church. You see what I'm saying? So now the church today is so concerned with the well-being of the pastor and, and his financial resources security that we have forgot about the salvation and the souls of those that come in the church is lost. We have forgot about praying for that man and that woman that came in the church looking for God because we're looking for his money. You see what I'm saying? So I hope that brought you up to date. Paragraph of verse 15 in that chapter, he says, it's not by meat we eat, though it be eaten with unwashing hands that is but without and goes through a man. It is the breaking out of the corruption that is in our hearts, okay? And mind and conscience are defiled, guilt is contracted, and we become odious in the sight of God by what by that which comes out of us so the church today right now is not a sweet smelling savor unto the nostrils of god because guess what we all out of order we sing we clap we give and we go home and sin matter of fact the the, the, the leadership is the main ones that's doing all the sinning yes we, we're not dealing with the heart of the real issue. We're trying to candy coat it and say, oh, you have seen da, da, da. Yeah, wait a minute. Now, hold up. What are you doing? We, 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 we forgot about teaching how God saves. We forgot about teaching about the favor of God. We forgot about teaching the mercies of God. We forgot about showing them that God's mercies is new every morning. We forgot about telling them that God is a healer. We're concerned with tithes and offering. We're concerned that whether or not you on time for choir rehearsal or whether you late for choir rehearsal. We're concerned that you got on the same shoes I got on, the same dress or suit or tie, bow tie I got on. We're not concerned about what we're sitting here to do. Jesus said, my house shall be a house of prayer. Okay, we ain't praying in the house. We singing, clapping, dancing. To, where's the prayer going for? Amen. So back to studying the Bible. When you study the Bible, you want to get some tools in place that you can even go into to help you understand what you have just read. One of the tools that also that I use is a strong <coughs> is a strong concordance. What do you mean? This and you can find it online also. I should have flipped the camera. It's a strong exhaustive concordance. What does this do? Well, it has every word in the Bible in here, and it's in Hebrew and it's in Greek. Okay. Know this, your Bibles were written in two different languages. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in Greek. So when you look for a word that you're trying, like say for instance, uh, when I was looking up, he that has an ear, let him hear. I wanted to know what they mean by ear and what did he mean by hear. So I went into the Strong's Concordance and did a word study on each one of the words of that sentence. Now, specifically ear and hear to see if it was another meaning than the one the meaning that I have. Okay, second thing you want to do, uh, another thing is you, you can find a Bible, it's a Bible called Thompson Chain Bible. It's a, that's the name of it, it's a Thompson Chain Bible. And it identifies all the words in the Bible, what the Hebrew and their Greek word is. 
So it helps you in, if you like to do word studies, that's what that Bible is for. So you see some preachers that do word studies, some that do do uh, expound on other things. And then you have those that do uh, um, uh, scenario type uh, preaching. So uh, for me, let's deal, let's deal with this one. Um, if you look at the bottom of Mark chapter 7, he goes into telling us what defiles a man. And in the Matthew Henry commentary, he broke it down. He said, as a corrupt fountain sends forth corrupt streams, so doth a corrupt heart send forth corrupt reasonings, corrupt appetites, and corrupt passions, and all those wicked words and actions which are produced by them. Divers particulars are specified as in Matthew, we had one there, which is not here, and that is false witness bearing. But seven are mentioned here to be added to those we had there. Okay, here we go. Look at how they mentioned it. He said, first he mentioned it, covetousness. It's plural. It's immoderate desires for more or wealth of the world and the gratifications of sense and still more, still crying, give, give, Hence, we read the heart exercise with covetous practices. So here we find that in the Matthew Henry commentary, he breaks down each one of the practices which was identified that defiles a man. Covetousness, <coughs> covetousness wickedness, deceit. Lasciviousness. Oh, that's that word that everybody gets stuck on. I don't care how many times you look it up. You want to know what lasciviousness is. Lasciviousness is that filthiness and foolish talking which the apostles condemned. The eye full of adultery and all wantonness and dalliances. Basically, your lust and your divers, your divers want to be you're being lustful. Let's just be like, you're just being lustful. You're looking at the, uh, 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 cut it out. Okay, that's lasciviousness. He said the evil eye. Oh, man, we know that. They call it the stink eye. <laughs> and then he talked about pride. And the last one he talked about was foolishness. Sometimes we want to make jokes of stuff to kind of just, make jest of it to, to try to divert from the seriousness of the matter. Uh, we cannot do that. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, um, it is joint because it is joined with pride. Uh, he said, I'd rather take it for the rashness of speaking and acting, which is the cause so, of so much evil. You cannot let because those join together with one another, they really become a stronghold in the heart. And when it comes out, it defiles a man. It, it's one of those, when it comes out, it defiles him. Okay. Okay, at least you say you got to get out. Oh, and please don't forget, you can ask questions on here, okay? So you got to give me a time. I'm, I don't want to come and be late. Thank you for checking my life. Okay. We, we come on every Tuesday at 7.30. Uh, inbox me your phone number, and I'll text you when I uh, before I come on. I normally send out a text before I do that to the people. Uh, and so I'll text you before I come on, all right? So here we go. So when you're studying the Bible, you really want to pay attention. Okay, what do I study? You want to study what jumps off the page at you. That's what you want to study. You want to study that thing that really makes it really just makes you inquisitive about what's going on. So even as I was studying this scripture or putting this together tonight for, you know, to go over how to study the Bible. As I was reading, what jumped out to me was if a man have ears to hear, let him hear. So I went to another Bible that I have. I got a Bible called the Dakes Bible. D-A-K-E-S, Dakes Bible. If you really, really, really serious about studying the Word of God, the Dakes Bible is something that you want because I'm going to tell you, he in that Bible, he got some stuff in there. I mean, he break it down. Like, for instance, 
If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. That statement is mentioned 15 times in the Bible. It is mentioned seven times all by Jesus Christ. It is mentioned seven times while he's in on earth and then the last seven times while he's in heaven. Uh, okay, okay, cool. Um, those 15 times that he mentioned it, see now I got, this is where my study goes. Each time he mentioned, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. What does that mean? In the, in the Hebrew, in the Greek, it says, um, ears. It was spelled O-V-S. Okay. It meant the physical or the mental ear. Okay. And then you said the word, it was Greek, it was Hebrew number 375, okay? And so here we go. 3775 was the Greek number. Okay, so here we go. In the strong concordance, here is correlated to the number 191, which is A-K-O-V-W in the Greek, which means to hear, give audience to, to come, to hearken to, to be noise, be reported. You mean report and also to understand. So when he say he that have ears to hear, let him hear. He wants you to not only understand it, but he wants you to report it. He wants you to go tell somebody about what you learned. He wants you to share your understanding with your brothers and sisters. Okay. So as I was looking at this and it said, if any man have ears, they let him hear 15 times. He said it 15 times. So guess what? Those 15 statements Jesus said that too, those are some very important things in the word of God that we should make a part of our normal practice to adhere to the things that he was talking about when he said it. Right. That's it jumped off the page at me. So now I got to look at, look, Matthew eleven fifteen, 15, Matthew 13, 9, Matthew 13, 43, Mark 4 and 9, Mark 4, 23, uh, Luke 7, 7, 16. I mean, Luke 8 verses, Luke 8 chapter verse 8, Luke the 14 chapter verse 35. All them times he said, he that have an ear, let him hear. So my research now goes to those scriptures, okay? That's how God speaks to us. That's how God lets us know what he is dealing with us about and why we should be paying closer attention to what he is teaching us, okay? I hope this has helped everyone on this line. Do I got any questions about what, you know, people say, well, what book of the Bible should I read first? Uh, go with St. John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, start with John, because John tells you about in the beginning, I was, he, the word was with him. He was the word and the word, you know, it, it starts right at the beginning and it goes all the way through. If you want to understand the gospel of the, the whole ministry of Jesus, read Mark. It's short. It's 16 chapters or 15, 15 or 16, 16 chapters, 15. And it's to the point. It's, it, Mark has no fluff. It's just straight to the point. Matthew breaks it out. It's got some fluff in it. Luke gives you a, a perspective from a, a physician's perspective. So it's like a, another perspective of the gospel. But I'm telling you right now, start at John, read Mark. If you want to know how to live, read the books of the New Testament that end in I-A-N-S. As 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Colossians, Ephesians, those books. You read those books, they tell you how to walk, how to live, what you should be doing on this earth. Then you got Romans and then you got Hebrews, okay? Those are, if, if that's where you want to start reading, that's where you want to start. I cannot tell you if you want to understand God, you got to get the NIV version and read the first five books. The uh, New Living Translation. If you like modern language, there's the Message Bible. Uh, you can get a Bible at the uh, bookstore that has all, it's called a parallel Bible. 
and you can have up to four books side by side. So when you read one, you can just look across the page and see what the other one said about the same scripture. The whole point of this is to make sure that you understand what God is saying to you. Well, I've been reading church all these years. God never speaks to me. Yes, he does. He speaks all the time. You just don't hear him. Every time you pick up that Bible to read, you should be listening for something that's going to jump off the page at you about you. And he's dealing with you. Amen. That's, that's how he speaks. I, so when I first got started, man, I would grab the Bible and I still do it today. I just grab it and stick my finger somewhere and just open it and start reading at the first chapter that's available. Which right now I'm in the Song of Solomon chapter 8. So I will start at the chapter 8. And so old thou were as my brother that sucked the breast of my mother when I should find thee without. I would kiss thee, yea, I would, which should not be despised. But that's how I would read the Bible. I would start reading right there. And be, before I got finished with the story, something on that page would jump out at me. And that would cause me to go into deeper depth into the study. Okay? So that's, uh, hopefully that helped. I hope that uh, you got some understanding behind this. But our whole, our whole key is God want us to understand what he is communicating to us. He can, you, 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 he that have an ear, let him hear. I think you're going to hear something about that come this weekend. We'll see. <laughs> but that's what I'm studying right now. So I know he was talking about the seven churches of uh, the seven churches in Revelation, but he was also uh, in the New Testament. Uh, we'll see what else he was talking about. But God bless you. I thank you for being here tonight. Uh, uh, if there's, uh, again, if you got any questions, please send them to me, inbox me. You can put them up while we're talking on Tuesdays. That's good. I'll answer them as best I can. Um, but I've been doing this for a minute. Y'all keep me in prayer too. Oh my God, y'all keep me in prayer. I, I, I've, I've been sitting too much. I need to get out and walk a little more, okay? Uh, so um, other than that, let us pray, okay? Father, we just thank you right now for what you're doing. I thank you for this lesson, God, on teaching us how to study your word. Father, open up our hearts and our minds, our understanding. Father, I rebuke slothfulness in the name of Jesus. Father, let us get an energetic spirit, oh God, about your word. Father, let it excite the people as they read your word. Holy Spirit, we thank you right now, for Father, for stirring up the gifts in us. Stir up the gifts that you place down in us, Father. The gifts that come down through the DNA, Father, from ancestral beings that we do not know. But Father, we know that we are the sons and daughters of of your children, God, of your chosen generation, God. And so, Father, as we come forth, oh God, give us understanding, oh God. Father, you brought us here for such a time as this. Lord, teach us how to pray, how to rebuke, oh God. Father, teach us how to love one another, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you tonight, God. We pray for all those that are sick right now, God. Father, let your anointing be upon them. Father, even as our hands are outstretched toward them, God, we bless them tonight, God. We anoint them with oil. We pray the prayer of faith, O oh God, and let healing, O oh God, begin to manifest in their bodies in the name of Jesus. And we just thank you, Father, for it. And thank you for deliverance. Thank you for setting us free. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank you there, Bishop. I appreciate you joining in on us tonight. Uh, uh, that's my Bishop, Bishop Dawson right there. Uh, if you're on Facebook, say hi to him. Uh, but, uh, God bless you guys. I thank you for being with us and I'll see you on Saturday morning at 1130 AM central standard time. All right. God bless you. And I'll talk to you there. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>